with well, and and he has the the uh, the, the toe tags, the rat bastard tags. That's true too. He certainly does. Something. So I since mentioned. he's wearing red, does that mean he's sexy? I mean, you can oh. ask Bob that, but Bob will be stuff to tell you. Of course, he is. He'll be the first to tell you. Yes, <laughs> he's the first one. <laughs> New chapter in the Jeep Talk Show saga is about to begin. We introduce regular product giveaways happening here on the Jeep Talk Show every month and sometimes every week. The world's most downloaded Jeep podcast will be giving you, the listener, a chance to win serious gear from major companies that you know, love, and trust. You want a chance to win tires, suspension components, maybe more? Listen every week for your chance to win big. You're listening to a 4x4 four by four, four by four Radio Network Podcast. Are you ready? It's the Jeep Talk Show with Wendy. There will be body damage. Jeep Mama. Are you sure? Josh. Yeah, I don't think so. And Tony. I think that's a huge deal. So sit back, strap in. Yourself. Well, you know, I don't know. Maybe I need a, a ruling on this from you guys. Um, Tammy hasn't been here in Guilty. so long. We probably should just remove her from the intro, right? No, we can't do that. No, nope. Tony, Tony, oh, Tony. That's a name I don't recognize. I mean, a I'm sound here. I don't recognize. I'm here. Tammy? Black Jeeps rock. <laughs> <laughs> well, you've been gone a long time, but you're still wrong. So, welcome. <laughs> and I've learned how to interrupt. <laughs> welcome back, I Tammy. Interrupt. <laughs> I have to make up for two years of interrupting. <laughs> well, I guess that's announcement. Tammy's back. And, of course, our other big announcement is reoccurring giveaways from vendors. I mean, big-time vendors out there. I mean, what that's a shot so in the arm. so exciting. I, I know. That's what a, wonderful. What a, I mean, this the, the belief that these people have, and we're going to have more coming along. Right now, we have, uh, and I know you guys know about Rock Auto. Rock Auto is a great place to get all the items you need, not only for your Jeep, but any vehicle you drive. Uh, they're going to be a, a sponsor for our show and uh, going to have regular giveaways from them. Uh, also, too, we're going to be uh, having uh, JKS Manufacturing. Uh, part of the uh, the Fox Group, and uh, I mean, you're going to love these giveaways from from JKS Manufacturing. And uh, who's the other one? Midland, oh, Midland JKS Midland Rock Radio, Auto. of course. You guys, you know, we did a big thing about Midland Radio. We gave a Midland Radio away with the the first 50 watt GMRS radio that Midland ever produced, and we gave one away to our listener. Well, Midland has agreed to do regular giveaways here on the jeep talk show so you gotta I hang really in there. wish the host were eligible gosh dang it <laughs> i know, I know. Gosh, darn it. it's not there fair something for us to be able to call well, in well, don't you think i guess one of the giveaway winners could gift it back to a go uh, to a host couldn't they I mean, that'd be Ooh. legal Let's talk oh, to the Zoom people a lot and see of if they'll do that. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I'll pay for the shipping. Let's go. But I'm right? <laughs> I'm really excited about this. It's it's just great. And and I I'm, the the main thing that we're excited about is is that we're getting things for you guys to put in your Jeeps or really anywhere you want to put them, but hopefully in your Jeeps, especially those Midland radios, because you need a GMRS radio when you're out there on the trail. So yes, much better than CBs. Of course, they sell CBs too. So, you know, you want to do a CB or that's what your group does, you can get that from MidlandUSA.com as well. Hey, you know, it doesn't matter if you have a Jeep, want a Jeep, or never do anything but Jeeps. This show is for you. Josh, Tammy, Wendy, and myself are here to inform and entertain you while we talk about where the hell Tammy is. Jeeps. Been. Jeeps. <laughs> I would say that all the time. Oh, no would one you? else would say that. I'm like, somebody say it. <laughs> <laughs> Well, they never knew what I was going to say. <laughs> Welcome back to the show, Jeeper and Tammy. I'm Josh, and on this episode of the Jeep Talk Show, we'll be talking about Jeep's latest Easter Jeep Safari concept teaser pick. I know we uh, in the last few episodes, we actually went over some. There's more. And what Jeeps may be seeing now, the now fully confirmed return of the inline six engine. That's right. It's coming back. Which Jeep is going to get it? And later, Jeeps don't leak. They just mark their territory, right? Uh, so we'll yep. go through what those markings may really mean. Howdy, it's Wendy, and I hope you're checking out our Friday episodes. When I cover my newbie nuggets section, I talk about all kinds of topics for the newest Jeepers. And Jeep Mama's back with more Yay. Jeep slang. Um, this time, it's not Jeep Mama's top 10 Jeep slang. It's 
the top 10 Jeep slang from our listeners. Hi, I'm Tony, and I interviewed Clayton. Okay, guys, say it for me. Smelling. I'll give it a try. Hi, I'm Tony, and I interviewed Clayton Smelling. Smelling? Did I get it? Smelling. Smelling? With C-H. Smelling. Okay. Smelling. I good enough. From beadlockers.com. <laughs> it's probably Poor smiling, Clayton. actually. I don't, I don't know. It's Last an interview he'll ever do with us. Right? He's like, oh, those guys, I hate them. God, they can't even get my name right. Local Jeep News, National Jeep News, and news from around the world. It's This Week in Jeep. So as you heard at the top of the show, in episode 583, we went over the four teaser photos Jeep has already released regarding what sort of concept vehicles they might be bringing to this year's Easter Jeep Safari happening in Moab, Utah, April 9th through the 17th. Now, historically, Jeep has brought some incredible works of automotive engineering combined with next-level imaginative bodywork and off-roading technology. Real works of art in some cases, but they are, after all, just concepts. Examples of what could be and what may be with the sole intention of impressing those who are lucky enough to see them. The four teaser picks released so far don't give us much, but we've got a pretty good idea of what they might represent. The fifth pick, released just this week, is again cryptic at best. In the background, we see what looks like the same kind of virtually mountainous rock formations found in Moab, Utah, with an orangish Jeep Wrangler in the foreground. The Jeep is pointing away from us. The perspective is about eight feet or so off the driver's side rear corner, and the entire back end of the Jeep is hidden with the fade to black of the image, highlighted with a JPP Jeep Performance Parts gear logo in the lower right-hand corner. This tells us that this Jeep will be showcasing new or at least soon to come to market Jeep performance parts. We're not sure what kind of Wrangler this is as we can't make out just how many doors this one might have. What we do see is a very prominent roof rack and some other amenities like a possible B-pillar storage pod and A-pillar grab handles. The Jeep is topless for the most part. It may have a top but no sides or at least a paint matched factory half doors. Another new product for Jeep. The signs are completely open, as are the possibilities of what this picture is supposed to mean, really. If I'm to read to be between the lines, I'd say that this will likely be a rock-crawling focused Wrangler for the masses, specifically engineered for the kind of terrain and wheeling experiences you see when off-roading in Moab, Utah. Or perhaps an overlanding-themed build with expedition-inspired accessories and upgrades from JPP. Time will tell, as by the time we record this, the Easter Jeep Safari is... Well, just a couple weeks away. I can't wait for this to happen so we can see what these pictures actually translate to. I mean, yeah, yeah. I'm, I'm excited, too, as because, um, you know, this is all a big guessing game. Uh, there's a of couple course. that I'm pretty sure I know what's going to be like a, a, a bright blue uh, 4XE Grand Cherokee. That is all but certain to be there. Now, the others are a little bit up in the air. Uh, as far as what they really could be or just how extensive the modifications or the concepts, if you will, have gone. Jeep historically has done a, an amazing job um, knocking it out of the park with some just amazing builds. Uh, but the last couple few years, as I've noted uh, in previous episodes, have been a little bit lackluster. I'm expecting the same this year. So far, nothing has really, that's been teased, blown my mind. It hasn't been like, whoa, I can't wait to see that in person, or I can't wait right. to get up close to that, or just what the heck is that that I am looking at? There's, no, there's none of that this, this year. Um, so maybe they're playing it safe. Maybe there's something behind the scenes that we don't know about yet. They're waiting to play that ace in the ace in the hole. They got something up their sleeve, as it were. So we'll see what happens here in the next couple of few weeks. Well, if you notice on the picture too that you have in the notes, all that blue splatter. So that's something I didn't pay attention to, Wendy. That's a good ah. point that you re the, the re you raise. Yeah. So in that fade to black section of the photo, there is a blue spa splattering. Now, in that shade of blue, that very specific, almost sky blue type Electric of color blue. has been exclusively saved for all of the 4XE brand of, mm -hmm. of uh, uh, well, of vehicles and their accessories. So like the tow hooks on the Wrangler 4XE are that color of blue. The badging right. is that color of blue yeah and so, all the, the the pinstriping too is blue that same blue yeah so i could i could see that this very well could be a version of a 4xe or possibly some other kind of hybrid option uh we will have to wait and see but good eye on that wendy i didn't i hadn't pointed that out before or i no, noticed that before rather i'll just mention that it just may mean that this rock crawler is actually going to scare the piss out of a 4xe well that's and possible that's why, too and that's why there's splatter <laughs> <laughs> oh yeah 
So awesome. uh, I just want to mention real quick that uh, Bob Two Cheap Jeep Guys is going to be uh, out there for the Jeep Talk Show at Easter Jeep Safari, uh, donning a a nice red uh, logo Jeep Talk Show logoed uh, polo shirt, and uh, he's going to have a handful of stickers and a handful of business cards. With well, and and he has the the uh, the, the toe tags, the rat bastard tags. That's true too. He certainly does. And uh, I actually remembered to uh, send him a copy. So he can print his own uh, toe tags now. So mm-hmm. something. So I since mentioned. he's wearing red, does that mean he's sexy? Of course. Uh huh. I mean, you can well, ask Bob that, but Bob will be to tell you. Of course, he is. He'll be the first to tell you. Yes, <laughs> he's the first one. <laughs> Uh, but really appreciate Bob uh, uh, being willing to uh, uh, be uh, one of our representatives going out there to Easter Jeep Safari. We'd love to go, but you know how uh, work and lack of money uh, has a tendency to <laughs> and broken cur- jeeps curtail yes. what you can do. <laughs> exactly. Yeah, he he actually has a video out that he posted uh, on the Jeep Talk Show uh, site, face Facebook page that shows him actually packing up all the stuff, including those rat bastard tags. So and hopefully, the- one of you listeners will get one. And your Jeep will be tagged. I'm, and I'm this missing is the, out on all this good stuff happening too. on Facebook lately. I, I, and Tony, you're, you're 10 times more active on social what? media than I am. 100 you, times more active. I just really active. haven't been that active on how Facebook you recently. This? Yes, and but so. it's the Jeep talk show. I know. You have to be following so, so that. You're talking Tony's about a the, TikTok guy now. You're talking about the Jeep talk show group, right? Not the page? Yes. The yes. group. Okay. So yeah, just go over posted. to the Jeep talk show group on Facebook and you can see these, uh, these videos. You mentioned yeah. uh, on last episode, and I was going to clarify this. That it was the uh, the 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 off road thing with Dana was also yeah, Dana on the Spicer. yeah uh-huh. was, that was also on the, the Facebook uh, uh, Jeep Talk Show group page page yeah oh, I just so typed many because we have a group and a page and yeah so th- this was on the group I can barely handle my own account Dana. I know I know it's tough <laughs> trust me trust me well I can barely handle my excitement over uh, what is about to be. And back in episode 548, I had a story of what was then just a rumor, uh, to be honest. And it was of the return of the inline six-cylinder engine to Jeep. Now, you don't have to listen to the show for very long to know that I'm a huge fan of Jeep's four-liter inline six. It, in my mind, was one of the best engines that Jeep has ever made. And uh, uh, this one, well, it's not a four-liter, but it's, it's coming back nonetheless. And uh, it's interesting, uh, all the details that are surrounding it. In episode 578, the rumor was confirmed to be true. And what we know is that the new variant of the venerable 4-liter inline 6 will be a 3-liter inline 6 with as much as two turbos, giving this new power plant a potential of over 500 horsepower. It will be called Hurricane, but you can call it Slurricane. Okay, (laughs) sorry, it it, it couldn't be helped. That was a blast in the past. (laughs) Okay. Well, there is something interesting in, interesting news surrounding this new engine, and they say that this new high-output version of the Hurricane will debut as a $2,000 option in the Wagoneer and Grand Wagoneer. A screen grab from the online Jeeps configurator supports this and confirms earlier rumors of the full-size Jeeps getting the new drivetrain option. The Hurricane's engine claimed 500-some-odd horsepower and 475 pound-feet of torque beat out the big V8's 471 horsepower and 455 pound-feet of torque. The less expensive Wagoneer will likely use the lower output version of the new inline-6, which claims 400 horsepower and 450 pound-feet of torque. The Wagoneer currently offers 392 horsepower with a 5.7-liter V8 engine with an e-torque hybrid system. The online specs show that the 3-liter Hurricane-equipped Wagoneer will offer maximum towing capacity of 10,000 pounds when equipped with rear-wheel drive and a towing package. This matches the current 5.7-liter V8's Wagoneer max tow rating. This won't be the only platform we are likely to see with the, you know, getting the new inline 6. Delantis has repeatedly said that the new Hurricane will likely make its way into many of its products. So, This is probably just the start of this new powertrain's prevalence across the automaker's lineup. I think it's probable that we will eventually see this replace the Hemi V8s currently found in Ram trucks, Jeep SUVs, and even beyond. Consider this the start of a new generation of inline-six engine dominance in Jeep. This is amazing. So, you know, I always, like, didn't understand what's the big deal about horsepower, and correct me if I'm wrong... But being in the mountains of Colorado, I think I get it now. It's like trying to get your trailer or your camper or whatever you have towing behind you up those mountain hills. 
Mm-hmm. Or, well, I mean, not besides just, just going fast. Or, or just your fat ass with all the skids and everything else <laughs> oh, that, you, that you put on the Jeep. I mean, you... Are you, you saying Jeeps, I have a fat ass, Tony? I just, that's can, what he said. That's not very <gasps> nice. Well, you need to be real careful where you point your Skype camera. <sighs> Ha ha ha! But no, I'm just saying. Wrong, but I'm just saying like with all the, the stuff that we're, that we're putting on jeeps, you, you you need the horsepower just to move it. Right. It's not well, just to go fast. You just need no, that. No, no, no. And, and, and in fact, um, think of horsepower as your ability to go fast. Think of torque as your ability to go quick. Right. And you can't you can't really tow without a lot of torque as well. You might right. be able to get that thing, that, that, that Jeep that's on the trailer behind you moving. It's going to take you a long time, and you're going to have a hard time getting up the hills, but you will be able to do it. With a lot of torque, it won't be a problem at all, and it will actually be rather easy on the vehicle. So w- with a, a, a maximum tow rating uh, of 10,000 pounds with a V8, and being able to do that with an inline six with, with some turbo power on it, and the, horse, and the horsepower ac- and, the, and the torque for that matter being better than the V8, and a Hemi V8 nonetheless, yeah. that's really impressive. It really and, is. And I think that that is something that a lot of people are, are, are sort of missing in all of this. Yes, the V8 is going to have, some, have that, that, that deep, throaty, sound to it there will be nothing that will ever be able to replace the sound of a v8 now that being said a high winding v6 or i should say an inline six that has more horsepower and more torque than that throaty v8 you know i think i'll take that inline six over the v8 any day of the week yeah performance versus sound yeah absolutely so you know you can you can do some exhaust tuning and stuff like that and you can get things kind of close uh, but we all know that there's really no different. There, there's really no comparing a, a sound of a V6 to a V8. But when uh, that V6 smokes that V8 on the track or on the trail or towing or in virtually every category, um, hmm, who's to say that there's any future for a V8 anymore? Well, you know, it's a learned experience. You hear that throaty V8. You see what it can do. You see the the big like top fuel dragsters running uh, V8s. And, and you associate power and speed and everything with that. But mm-hmm. if, if the, the I-6 comes along <laughs> and it's, it's accomplishing those things with a different sound, well, the, I think that it, you'll just go, oh, well, I like that sound because it has the, the power and everything else that I used to associate with the V8. So I think it's just a learned experience. Yeah, I think so too, and I and I think that uh, the time will tell the the both the popularity, the the overall performance, and of course reliability uh, of this new never before seen powertrain. Before this is an all new motor uh, from the ground up. This is nothing wow. like the like the inline sixes of yesteryear. Uh, okay. The design is 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 virtually completely uh, swapped around. I mean, it, it is is for all intents and purposes a a, a different motor. Um, there is there's nothing comparable to the to the four liter in line six, uh, other than the six cylinders are in line with each other versus in a V configuration or in an H configuration, something like that. So, uh, yeah, this is this is all new technology, um, and we already know that there's going to be three different tunes right out of the box uh, with this thing, and as far as different power outputs. The highest output is going to be going into the biggest Jeeps, at least so far. And there's a chance that we're going to see one of these in a Wrangler very soon. Uh, whether or not that's even going to happen at Easter Jeep Safari would also be an interesting question. Will we see this at EJS? Uh, that is, I think, is something that uh, nobody has, has answered yet. And I don't even know if Jeep is going to be able to get one of these things underneath the hood of a vehicle before then. So um, right now, you can at least order a vehicle with this engine. How soon you can get it is a whole other story. But for now, it's a reality, and it's here. If you have a news tip or response to any one of our stories, we want to hear what you Jeepers have to say and, of course, what you're seeing out there. If there's a, a headline that we've missed and you think that we should be reporting on something, by all means, let us know. You can do that by heading over to jeeptalkshow.com slash contact and uh, find out all the different ways you can reach out and engage with the show. Hey, stick around. We got coming up here in a little bit later. We've got an interview with the man behind beadlockers.com. His name is Clayton Schmelling. You don't want to miss this. You're listening to a 4x4 radio network podcast. 
Yes, you are, you lucky listener. You Did you know that there's all kinds of off-road audio over there at 4x4 Radio Network? That's right. The 4x4 Radio Network is the web's only one-stop shop for all your off-roading podcasts. And we've got something for everybody over there. It's not all Jeeps all the time, although that would be pretty cool. But uh, no, there's a ton of different shows over there. The Center Steer Podcast got nothing to do with Jeeps. Trail Chasers, the On the Trail Podcast, the world-famous 4x4 Podcast, and of course, the most downloaded Jeep podcast on the planet. The Jeep Talk Show is there as well. It's all in one place. It's all for free. The number four, the letter X, the number four, and radionetwork.com. The 4x4, radionetwork.com. We'll see you there. Why did you become a paid subscriber to the Jeep Talk Show? Jeep Talk Show is in my weekly rotation. Look forward to it every week, each and every Friday. You can be a paid subscriber and help support the show you love, the Jeep Talk Show. I support a great podcast. been a lifelong Jeeper myself. Continue to learn with each and every episode that I listen to. Just go to JeepTalkShow.com and look for the big yellow subscribe button. Absolutely. If you like Jeeps, anything to do with Jeeps, I like it for the, the technical, clear content, uh, advice, and learning. So if you'd like to become a paid subscriber, we've got a, a new uh, Jeep Talk Show off-road event uh, for Texas coming up in June, and you could uh, help us uh, get that, uh, all the money we got to spend on that, uh, help us with that event. And, uh, you know, uh, if you've gotten anything from this show, entertainment or information or both, you might want to think about being become a paid subscriber. Just go to jeeptalkshow.com slash contact and scroll on down, and you'll see where you can become a paid subscriber today. From the mind of Nikki G. Hey, this is Nikki G. And uh, last week you guys made a big announcement that you're not really doing away with the Zoom room, but you are, sort of. <laughs> and that uh, you're having monthly giveaways or weekly giveaways or some type of giveaway. And uh, Jeep Mama, Tammy, is returning to the show live. As opposed to uh, unlive or zombie like, <laughs> but I would like to tell you that I too, Nikki G, has n- have an announcement to make. Yeah, that <gasps> bunion on my foot—it actually turns out it's a fungus. Yeah, Gross. a nice tasty fungus. <laughs> well, that's not why I'm Bacamole. calling. I'm calling to tell you that we have a hometown baseball team called the Possums. Yeah, they really do great at home, but they get killed on the road. <laughs> <laughs> All right, boys and girls. I'll chat you later. You have a good one. Bye. What do you think? I, I was I was thinking it was going to be a play dead joke. Yeah, but, uh, uh-huh. I did too. Do you think that was a Nikki G original? I think that was a, a Nikki G original. <laughs> you got tech questions? Ah, oh, what do I ever? We have answers. Oh, that's good. I can, I, it's tech talk with Jeep Talk. Yahoo! We as people, as human beings on this planet, have some pretty unique fluids flowing through our bodies, and despite our best efforts, well, sometimes they leak out. If it's red, well, it's blood. You're bleeding. <laughs> pretty pretty much it's uh, a no-brainer right there. If it's clear fluid coming coming out of you, well, it's probably spit, tears, or sweat. And if it's yellow or brown, okay, you get the idea. The same goes <laughs> for your Jeep. <laughs> The which same which one is the sweet one? I guess it depends on if you're say, diabetic or not. show, Josh. <laughs> <laughs> Welcome I, back, it, Tammy. It, there's a method to my madness here. <laughs> yeah. uh, there, there are all kinds of fluids in all parts of that Jeep of yours, and they may sometimes leak out. So if you have a mystery spot in the driveway or garage or parking spot and aren't quite sure what it is or where it may be coming from, well, I'm here to help you out. From top to bottom, from front to back, we'll go through all the different kinds of fluids found in all parts of your Jeep. I'll tell you what they're supposed to look like, where they might be coming from, and some possibilities as to why you're seeing these fluids, too. And I'll also be talking about how to tell if something may be wrong with your Jeep by the color, smell, or texture of these fluids. Okay, first off, let's talk about water. No, not not coolant, and yes, there is a huge difference. You wouldn't drink coolant. But occasionally you may see a small puddle of water under your Jeep. Plain old crystal clear water. Dipping a finger into the little puddle, it will feel and even smell like water. Albeit with a touch of pavement, I'm guessing. But where did it come from? Well, it's if your Jeep has AC, then this is likely condensation from the evaporator. It's entirely normal, nothing to be worried about, and will be more common the more the AC is used, especially in hotter temps. There could be other reasons too, like trapped water in the cowl or frame even. So it never hurts to do a quick visual inspection anytime you see any fluid underneath the Jeep and see if you can't pinpoint the source. More on that later. 
Now, if that water-like substance has a color to it, like purple or orange or yellowish green, then this is likely coolant. And it should feel slightly oily or, or slimy, but not thick at all. Coolant is always very water-like when it's in good condition. And the more color it has to it, the better condition it is generally in. The smell may be a bit fishy to some. It may smell like cat pee to others, but it generally will have a Swedish undertone to it. The reason you may see this under your Jeep is because it simply got too hot and some escaped out through the overflow hose. You may have a bad radiator cap or this kind of condition is actually more common than other reasons like a broken radiator, cracked radiator hose, or failing water pump even. Again, a visual inspection will likely show the source if it is indeed coolant that you're seeing. Now, if that coolant is milky, looks more like a smoothie or a milkshake, well, you've got a lot more serious of a problem going on, and this is a sign of a head gasket failure, allowing oil and coolant to mix with air to create the milky nastiness you are seeing. Another near-water-like substance that could be found under your Jeep may look orange or even sometimes blue as well, and depending on how fresh it is, you may even see it accompanied by bubbles. What we're seeing here is windshield washer fluid. The smell should give it away instantly, with a very soapy smell, maybe even a little bit of a chemical bleachy smell, depending on the brand. But why you would see this is actually pretty rare. But it could be something as simple as a hose getting disconnected from one of the spray tips, or perhaps there's a crack in the washer fluid reservoir, or simply the cap is off. Now, if the fluid you're seeing under your Jeep is reddish or pinkish in color, well, there's almost always going to be transmission fluid in that case. Transmission fluid is also used in the transfer case as well as the transmission, so it could be coming from either or both. Transmission fluid, when brand new, is a rich Kool-Aid see-through red color, and it will be slightly thick, similar to motor oil, in fact. But as this fluid ages, it loses some of its red color and will turn light red to pink in color. Although too pink, and that's a sign of water in the transmission fluid, and you want to do something about that. When this fluid has been exposed to excessive heat or overuse, it turns brownish in color and will take on a burnt type of smell to it. Very prevalent. If you ever check your transmission fluid and it's black, well, let's just say you never want to see black transmission fluid. Another fluid that has the ability to be burnt is oil, engine oil. And this is oftentimes the most common fluid found underneath your Jeep. Oil on the ground is almost always black or very brownish in, uh, blackish brownish in color. If you are seeing oil on the ground, it's because, well, there is a seal in your motor that has failed somewhere. Different Jeep engines all have their own typical or common oil leak sources, and a quick search will help you narrow down your inspection. I suppose it should go without saying, but obviously, your Jeep shouldn't be leaking oil of any amount or any color at any time. Any oil leak should be repaired as soon as possible to avoid further damage and, well, that nasty oil stain in the driveway, too. If the oil that you're seeing is a much lighter color, if it's goldish brown in color, well, this too could be oil, but not motor oil. You're likely looking at gear oil. It's going to be very thick, and it's going to, be, it's going to stink really, really bad. Luckily for you, the sources of this fluid are your differentials. Easy to see, easy to get to, and easy to tell if they're leaking. This too is an oil that can froth up and sometimes be milky as well. But that's uh, a sign of an overheated gear, uh, gear set. Overheated gear oil or oil in the leaky differential can actually aerate and become frothy like a milkshake. Although it might look kind of cool, it's really bad on your gears. And this is a sign that it could be time for a differential overhaul depending on what is causing that leak. Now, another fluid that is uh, just as stinky as gear oil, but not as thick, is power steering fluid. This, too, is typically goldish in color, may be slightly brown, and also stinks. It will have about the same consistency of motor oil, but it has a very pungent petroleum-like smell to it. On most Jeeps, the power steering pump, its pump, its hoses, and its gearbox are all on the same side of the motor and within a short distance of each other, so tracking down where this leak may be coming from shouldn't be too hard. Just a note, though, uh, sometimes power steering fluid leaks only present themselves when the system is under load or under pressure, so having somebody inside the Jeep to work the wheel while you look may be critical to finding where the leak is coming from. And to throw more confusion at you, well, here's another goldish-colored fluid that can leak out of your Jeep. Brake fluid. Brake fluid is basically hydraulic oil. It, too, will have a slightly strong smell to it. It will be slippery between the fingers and have the same consistency as fresh motor oil. Luckily for you, if you see this fluid on the ground, it is more than likely coming from one corner of your Jeep and a sign of a worn, failing, or broken brake component, likely a caliper or a soft line. 
This too is likely going to be a leak that can only be seen when there is pressure on the system unless there is a telltale sign of a leak by the inside of your tire being wet. So make sure the reservoir is full and have someone pump the brakes while you see where the problem may be coming from. Regardless of what the leak is, what fluid you may be seeing, there is nothing more important than using your senses. Feel the fluid. Smell it. Look at it. Look for signs of metal debris by feeling for grit or metal shavings. See if it has microscopic amounts of metal in it by looking for any amount of a glitter-like appearance to the fluid. Smell it for signs of burning or overheating. Familiarize yourself with what the fluid is and you'll be better off for it. And, well, frankly, so will your Jeep. Here's a pro tip I want to leave you with. Sometimes it's kind of hard to tell the color of a vehicle's fluid judging by just what's on your finger, the ground, or a dipstick. So smearing some on a small piece of white paper gives you some contrast to see what the color really is. Notebook paper, newspaper, even paper towels, napkins, the back of an envelope, or a business card even. Really, any kind of white paper that isn't waxy like butcher paper or magazine paper will work just fine for this test. So, here's some homework for you. Go out to your Jeep, take a small sample of each of the fluids on your Jeep that you can get to, smear a little dab of each one on a piece of white paper, and label the smears. Keep this for reference, and as you go, be sure to feel and smell each one. And the next time that your Jeep marks its territory, you'll know what it is it did it with. That is such a good idea. Yeah, I, I love that idea. I'm going to do that tomorrow morning with my Jeep to see, make sure it's oil. It's the well, worst scratch and sniff ever, people. <laughs> <laughs> well, and I, I just want to say from a newbie standpoint, you know, we're always talking about when you finish a trail run to look at your Jeep and inspect your Jeep. And this is a perfect reason and example. I love this description. Josh, this was so clear for me to understand. I'm sure the newbies out there were doing the same thing, but this is why we use a power washer every time that we go out and Bill just checks that Jeep from one end to the other. And we yeah. look and see because you can tell if something's leaking, you know, exactly. It's, this is great, Josh. Thanks for this content. It's fabulous. So I yeah, told I my, uh, my wife and daughters that what they need to do is get in the habit of uh, looking under their Jeeps. And it's, it's easy. Well, uh, Cassie's Jeep is not lifted, but still, it, it's not real close to the ground. Get, it, get in the habit of looking under your Jeep, like whenever you, especially after you've driven it and you park mm -hmm. it. And you'll see, most of the time, uh, the thing you'll see leak, what leaking is the condensation, uh, the overflow uh, coming from the uh, AC condenser. Uh, and, and it's always in the same place. So if you see clear liquid in another place where you're not used to seeing it, then that would be reason for concern. And then things that aren't clear. But, you know, get used to what the, the Jeep is putting down, so to speak, and you'll have a better idea before it stops going. You'll have a better idea of maybe whenever you're safe in the parking lot or at home uh, to have it looked at or look at it yourself before you take off on another adventure. Yeah, I know this was a, a little bit of a long segment, a little bit of a long tech talk. I didn't want to break this up because you yeah, know, break you can't. this up, it would have you know there there would have been too much information to to try and disseminate across two episodes and keep it all you know together and coherent and stuff so there'd be too much lost in between episodes and between weeks and days of, of of hearing this sort of stuff so i wanted to throw it all at you all at once and i know it was a lot to digest and stuff but if you ever want uh to go back and get a reference for this uh we'll, we'll have a full breakdown pretty much a verbatim uh, uh what do they call that a uh, uh transcript yeah there you go of uh of what i just said in the show notes for this episode at jeeptalkshow.com and you can go back, you know, years from now and go look at this. Oh, what was he saying about, about coolant and, and the color? You know, and stuff. So you can go back into episode 587 and uh, in the show notes at jeeptalkshow.com and you can see all this for yourself. I even got a couple few uh, visual references in there, some, uh, uh, a little bit of show and tell, if you will, some stuff that'll help you along the way uh, to diagnose what it may be that's on the ground underneath your Jeep. And I'm just uh, going to throw this in there. You don't actually have to read it from the website. You can just listen to the, the show over and over and over. Uh, well, that's true. And, and just to be clear, G uh, Josh, this is just about the Jeep fluids, not the first fluids you were talking about uh, at the top of the segment. <laughs> yeah, no. I don't want you to start pulling fluids out of your body and putting them on paper. <laughs> Look, <laughs> honey. It's yellow. That's, <laughs> but, that's what I learned on the do, talk show today. But we do want you to seek medical treatment if you notice uh, certain uh, fluids yeah, dripping out of the ground when you get out of the Jeep. Yeah. 
thought. No, I and I know it's it's very weird. And to think about, well, I'm not going to just get down on the ground and put my fingers in a puddle and 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 sniff it. Well, it might yes, actually you save you several thousands <laughs> yeah. of dollars if you do, uh, and you know what it is that you're doing. So you know, it's I, I can't tell you how many times I've done this, and and where I'm working on somebody's car in my driveway or somebody's vehicle in my driveway, and and there's a fluid down there, and it's like, oh, let me check that really quick. Oh, it's just condensate water. That's not a problem. You don't need to you know worry about that. But they always look at me like, is he really smelling fluid that he just scooped <laughs> yeah. off the ground with his fingers? Do you do you know? Do, get- do you do the young doctors in love thing where you use one <laughs> finger? To dip it in the, the fluid and then the other finger to lick on it like you're testing it. You're tasting. No, it. I don't lick you gotta, it. No. You got to do that. You know, taste. switch fingers like they did in I that don't movie. Taste the driveway fluid. <laughs> no, <laughs> but freak them out. I'm just saying, freak them out. Switch. But if you do, Josh, you got to put it on video so yeah. we can get it on the, on the show. <laughs> seriously, seriously. Well, if you guys have anything to add or maybe uh, something that I might have missed, or if you have a question or a topic you would like covered on Tech Talk, please just jump over to jeeptalkshow.com slash contact. You're going to see all kinds of ways you can reach out to us. You can email me directly, and I can go ahead and get your topic here answered on the show. On Jeep Talk Show episode 321, Josh tells us about pizza abuse. There are few sites in this world more horrendous than that of wasted pizza. But a Troy, Michigan man has woken up to that unspeakably tragic sight not once, but three times this month. Friends don't let friends abuse pizza. The man told police he woke up to the splattering sound of pizzas dumped and thrown all over the man's red Jeep compass. You won't know what you've missed unless you listen. The man says he has no idea why anyone would want to deface his Jeep, let alone with something as tasty and as loved as pizza. From around the world. Or from your city. And sometimes just down the street. Howdy, neighbor. It's the Jeep Talk Show interview. Alrighty ho, boys and girls. It's time for another Jeep Talk Show interview. And tonight we're going to be talking with Clay from BeatLockers.com, your premier overland outfitter and off road accessories superstore. This isn't just a store, people. It's a superstore. Beadlockers is a premier overland outfitter of off-road accessories shop and online retailer located in southeast Wisconsin. Uh, They offer products uh, for everything off-road as well as professional-grade expedition equipment from around the world. Their experienced team of off-road enthusiasts are there to help guide you through the process no matter what kind of build you're working on, which means... Jeeps are other than Jeeps. Is that correct, Clay? That's correct. Yep. Any Anything that will fit on, I mean, it's like ARB, for example. ARB isn't just for Jeeps. You might think so, but it's not. So, you know, anything that the that ARB builds, you can, you can get it from Clay and uh, put it in your Toyota or Nissan or I would imagine all kinds of vehicles. Actually, what vehicles do, do you guys support uh, specifically? Well, specifically, I mean, we're kind of all over the board. We do everything from... Uh, Boy, just your Avenger rigs, uh, your Jeeps, the Toyota platform. Uh, we do a lot of Lexus stuff here. Um, trying to think of what else, what other big ones. I mean, those are. I mean, those are the three, three or four major ones right there. You know, even just the Jeep and the Toyota platform. Sure. But yeah, pretty much anything that you can slap uh, an aftermarket component on. Yep. And uh, just looking here at BeatLockers.com, uh, I see uh, TerraFlex, uh, Best Top, Dana, ARB, Icon, which I'm sure. Or just uh, some of the few that you have? Yeah, so we're an authorized dealer for, man, we got some really cool companies, uh, some new ones uh, from overseas. But uh, locally here at Stateside, we got Best Top, Power Tank, Midland Radio, uh, and some of the big like Overland uh, companies that are coming from overseas. We have Red Arc, uh, Easy On, Big Country 4x4. Uh, Goose Gear was another one. Uh, they're, they're a great company. You know, they outfit stuff as well. But uh, some of the more expedition grade stuff uh, from Easy On, Big Country 4x4, and Red Arc. I mean, those are uh, the biggest uh, components that uh, we have offer right now for more of the expedition style vehicles. All right, I always have to ask this for for overlanding stuff, and and, and I was just curious what your answer is. What is overlanding? Overlanding, interesting. <laughs> um, <laughs> Boy, let me tell you about my first overlanding experience. There we go. Uh, Uh, You can't answer. That's good. I can't answer it either. (laughs) Yeah. My first overlanding experience, basically, it's car camping uh, at its finest. Back in the day, I would say in my mid to late 20s, 
some of the funnest times that I've ever had. It wasn't even in an off-road specific vehicle. It was a 79 Volvo station wagon, uh, I think what, the D240? And I had that thing outfitted with a rack on the top, studded tires. I lived out in uh, northern Idaho at the time, and I'd run trails in the middle of winter. And, I mean, it, it was a great time. We'd camp out, and uh, there were some great rivers up there, you know, for fly fishing and stuff. But that's kind of my experience, uh, you know, when I first got into, like, the whole thing. I've always been into, like, the outdoors and stuff. But that kind of takes me back, you know, to the original days of, you know, just getting – off the beaten track and uh, camping and just going off-roading. Getting out there where the, the, the majority of people don't go, experiencing what the majority of people never experience, or if they do, they, they may have experienced it once or twice as a kid. So basically, it's you get in a vehicle, you take a bunch of stuff with you so that you can, uh, uh, I guess, like it'd be like going to a hotel, but, but your vehicle is the hotel and, and you're the concierge. You're the one taking care of all the... The, the call in uh, the room service and everything uh, <laughs> and yeah, uh, doing all that. that extended boondocking <laughs> so the thing that I always wondered about is I see uh, overland vehicles set up with uh, with water onboard water systems and I was always curious because water is heavy is isn't there a limit to how much water you can safely carry or <laughs> when you come to a stop it doesn't just slosh back and forth while you're trying to stop yeah, there's a couple a couple really cool companies uh, that make some water res- uh, reservoirs that would actually go. Let's just say like uh, in an SUV uh, on the in the back seat area uh, on the floor, it would mm-hmm. extend across a tank that that whole area, um, maybe 10, 15 gallons. You could also put stuff up on the roof. It does slosh around, but it's not you know anything that's like uh, you know you really have to worry about. Um, but you can also go empty, and when you get to a source, we just uh, p- picked up a new company recently here called Clear Source, and uh, they have a portable uh, water filtration system that you just connect right up to a 12 volt source, uh, like your battery, and you can pump water directly from the river into your 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 uh, reservoir. Ah, very uh, nice. Out out uh, in the middle of nowhere, if you yeah. wanted to. Well, that that'd be good for shower water if you didn't, even if you didn't filter it. I mean, you might get a fish stuck on on you or something. But I was just thinking, <laughs> yeah. why would you want to carry all that that nice drinking water out there and take a shower with it? Uh, yeah, but boy, a, that would be a perfect really good, uh, resource there. Yeah, that'd be perfect for that. The so one that they make the portable unit. It's called the Nomad by Clear Source. So is is would you say that is a common thing that people have is some sort of shower system with some sort of heating, uh, like maybe solar heating for the top to actually warm the water up, or is that getting too fancy? That's yeah, it depends on the individual again. <laughs> uh, some guys, you know, like to have their shower every day. Some people can go weeks without one, so it's not really for me to say, but all personal preference. Yeah, yeah. Well, I figured if uh, if you guys uh, sold uh, showers and all all this, that type of stuff, you probably have some uh, some good stories, or at least know how many people are buying them. So uh, well, that, like, that's like really interesting. Racks, oh, sorry about that, Tony. But uh, on the roof racks, they actually make these little uh, curtains that you can mount on uh, on top of them to kind of give you like a little shower area as well, mm-hmm. which is kind of cool. Yep, I've seen some of those. So, um, what is what do you, in your opinion? What do you think the best off roading? I'm sorry, not off roading, but um, overlanding vehicle would be? Would it be a big one where you can carry everything with you, or maybe a midsize? Uh, I don't know about you, but every time I go someplace, I tend to overpack, and it, and I think a lot of people starting out in overlanding do the same thing. Yeah, uh, you know what? That, that kind of depends on the individual again, and the stuff that you're packing along. You know, if you're going to have a rooftop tent. Uh, some kind of drawer system with fridges in the back. I mean, you're going to have to get a suspension system that'll, you know, accommodate those things. And not only that, I mean, that's a lot of weight. Uh, you need the right size vehicle or you could pull an external trailer. Um, but I know a lot of people that just run a two door, uh, you know, JL, JK, uh, you know, LJ and just uh, pack a tent along and they have a little fridge in the back and they can go for, you know, an extended period of time. You know, it kind of all depends on the individual family size again. I like that. There was a uh, a gentleman that uh, he drove around the outside part of uh, Africa over a period mm-hmm. of three years in a, in a JKU, and I was just amazed by that because, you know, that's a relatively small vehicle when you compare to, like, Land Rovers and some other things that people traditionally do that in. So yep. I, I guess it really just depends on your imagination and what you think you have to have with you. 
Uh, obviously, right. you just need food, a nice place to, uh, to, a nice, safe, dry place to sleep and uh, be able to get from point A to point B and have a nice camera with you, hopefully. Yep. Um, another thing to go along with that is some of these awning systems now, too, Tony. Uh, so, Big Country 4x4, uh, this is a prime example of like your expedition grade uh, stuff. So, they make a 270 degree awning uh, that has a wall kit that will zip right onto it. So, now you don't even have to have a rooftop tent. Uh, or an external trailer, you put the awning out and you put the, the walls up and you have a complete enclosure there. Very, which is cool. very nice. Yeah. It's good to get in and out of the rain because that seems like that, that always happens. Yeah. And it's anything you can do to separate you from uh, the uh, the animals. I, you know, I guess maybe one of the, the, the biggest feared animals for me would be the, uh, uh, the uh, skunks. <laughs> <laughs> I don't want to smell bad uh, for when I get, especially if I can't take a shower. <laughs> skunks and porcupines. Oh, what, what, I, I, we don't have porcupines down here as far as I know. What do porcupines do you, the, the quill you or? So those things are loaded with spikes. And, uh, when I, when I was younger, uh, I think, I don't know my uncle or somebody told me that they, they can like poop themselves up and they can shoot their spikes out, which I don't think is true. Uh, but yeah, I was always, you know, hesitant to like get close to some of those porcupines, but they are up here and they're covered with these hollow spikes that when they stick into you have to cut the spike to get it out otherwise you're going to do a lot of damage trying to get them out oh so much fun i think i'm gonna stay home there's ac at home too <laughs> yep. all right so what i see that you guys have winches you've got the the rooftop tents uh you got uh, uh air uh, compressors air systems uh so tell us a little bit just you know give me a rundown on some of the the big items that you guys have that you uh, uh you uh, sell a lot of Sure. Uh, a lot of it is going to be lighting accessories, suspension systems uh, for all platforms. Uh, you know, you mentioned the Terraflex earlier. I mean, that's a, that's a really cool company. Uh, to, you know, uh, they have some great components and uh, suspension uh, kits. Uh, you know, Icon, we do a lot of stuff with them. And uh, there's a lot of new, newer stuff um, coming out. There's Armadillo Bag, uh, which is like this uh, folded folding uh canvas style bag that you can put fuel in and uh or water you know it's just a a, a reservoir um, we got the my medic uh first aid kits uh, a lot of these guys you know going to off-road parks uh, they require you know fire extinguishers and med kits you know as a basic requirement to get in uh the my medic kits uh are, are great they make basic and uh, advanced kits uh in all different sizes um mc ranch was another one uh it's this aluminum it, it, it folds out it's a it, it goes around your your fire pit uh it's about two feet tall and it's got these four panels that you unfold and you put this uh, out in front of your fire pit and it reflects all the heat back to you which is really cool um and it kind of just you know breaks up that environment uh, and kind of gives you like a little enclosure in front of your fireplace or your your uh your your bonfire i can see that would be very handy especially on a very cold night uh having the that 360 degree of heat well not really 360 but you know what i mean and having it uh, come back towards you that would be uh could could and really make a big difference sure and that way you can have your fire a little bit you know out uh from like your awning area and you can put that up and it reflects all that heat back in which is really cool so if you want to get out of the rain or the snow and uh you know have that you know added warmth uh creature comfort there it's uh, pretty nice Another uh, one I wanted to mention, Tony, was Elkhorn Drive Shafts. Uh, we just uh, started working with them, and we're going to start. Uh, we're going to put some of their products online too. But they're a drive shaft company out of Wisconsin here, uh, I believe, right down in Elkhorn, and uh, they got some cool stuff. So we'll have some of that stuff up here soon. Um, I'm trying to think of what else. That Peak Refuel. I mean, we do a. It's kind of nice having the Overland Outfitting accessories and the off-road accessories. So on the performance side. You know, we have access to over 500,000 SKUs. So if we if you don't see it on the website immediately, give us a call because anything, uh, you know, that the big box uh, stores have, we have the same. I mean, if I wanted to build a dragster tomorrow, I could. <laughs> uh, so on the performance side, I mean, the, the world's your oyster, you know, whatever components you're looking for, whether it's uh, suspension, uh, Bill Stein, ARB, uh, Terraflex, Icon, Old Man Emu, and then, uh, you know, on the performance side, there's no end to it. Roll cages, instrument cages, bearings. You know, uh, I just thought of a, a great YouTube video for you. You need to build a dragster and take it uh, overlanding. <laughs> take it overlanding. Put a rooftop tent on a dragster. Yeah, yeah. We, there you go. We can't go anywhere, but we can get there fast. <laughs> exactly. Yeah. 
So you uh, guys also carry uh, uh, two-way radios uh, that I was noticing. Uh, Midlands, which we, uh, we've we had uh, Zach from uh, Midland USA on a couple of times. And oh, okay. uh, so, uh, no, Zach, and uh, you uh, looks like you carry the Midland radios, or I don't know if all of them, but at least uh, a good majority of them, and also two uh, rug, rugged radios. Yep. Yep. So we carry both lines. And then uh, I'm just trying to think. There was some... Uh, other, we don't do a lot of the ham radio stuff. That that's kind of a, a hard market to break into. Usually, uh, mm-hmm. all the, the higher end radios uh, they're kind of chewed up by ham radio outlet, um, and it's oh, hard yeah. to get any of that kind of stuff wholesale. Uh, but like on the GMRS side, you know the Midland radios, the rugged radio, uh, rugged radio. I mean, they're all over the. But they got you know the, uh, complete communication systems for you know helmets to like you know, King of the Hammers, a lot of these guys use uh, that kind of communication systems. And then, uh, you know, there's some more higher end stuff out there, but uh, a lot of these guys, you know, run rugged radio stuff, uh, but most of your overland community in like uh, your outdoor enthusiasts, they're all going to mostly run your uh, GMRS stuff from Midland, which is uh, great, great right. stuff. We've been uh, telling our listeners to uh, get away from the CB and uh, look at the GMRS. I mean, the ham radio stuff is yep. great. I've been a ham radio operator for many, many, many years. But the problem that you'll find as a ham radio operator is nobody else wants to go through all the crap you went through to get your license. So if you want to talk to them like your wife or your kids, just get a GMRS radio. It's basically the same technology as ham radio on UHF. And there's even repeaters like like there is like there is in ham radio. And it's, you know, there's no test. It's a, a, a $70 license that's good for 10 years for five people. Yeah, uh, for, you know, that's for, good. yeah exactly. That's what I was going to say. So it's like for your whole family, your, your whole yeah. immediate family. So you just need one license. Um, and for yeah, over, and you can get some decent ranges out of those too. Even, oh, yeah. I found, uh, even with the Midland stuff, I mean, there's times that I got, you know, three to five miles off of uh, with GMRS radios. Yep, yep, with the right antenna system and the, uh, especially if there's no uh, tree coverage between you and the other person, or mm-hmm. d- or depending on the coverage, it, it uh, you can get quite quite good at range with it. It it makes a big difference when you don't you don't have to compete with a lot of other people, especially like whenever a uh, skip is in on CB. I mean, you could you could not t- be able to talk ten feet when the, the the skip is really really bad and people are doing illegal things across the yep. country. So yeah, I mean it's it's wonderful uh, if uh, it, it's a, to me that would be the the thing that you would ha- absolutely have to have if you were doing overlanding. Uh, you just I mean just go into the bathroom, which is the the third tree on the right. Take the radio, take the handy talkie with you in case anything happens that you need some yeah, help. Exactly. <laughs> the, I mean they're great for camping. You know, just base camp. You throw one at your kids. You know, a handheld unit. Have a base station. Uh, you know, RV or at the in the jeep back uh, at camp. Um, you know, if somebody wants to go take a little hike or, uh, oh, yeah, yeah, yeah exactly. Were great. Oh, I've, I've had it already where, you know, we were with a group of people and, you know, one person didn't have a radio and, uh, two minutes later we're like, you know, Hey, where did John go? And, uh, nobody's, you know, he's not behind me. And it took about, you know, cause in a lot of places you don't have cell, cell phone service. Exactly. And, and so. of course that's one of the pluses for many people <laughs> not having the service out there. <laughs> getting away from it now i gotta ask you i see here on your site that you guys have a jazz rooftop tent is that for sleeping or a party <laughs> that one uh, actually that one that's a really popular tent uh originally <laughs> i was going to get that over the series three by easy on and that they they when they come in they're out of stock right away that's a that's a nice uh, light duty tent uh well they're they're have, they're extremely well built uh, uh, okay. compared to like your smitty built uh like Overlander tent, the material is like twice as thick. The mosquito netting is like, I tell people, I don't know what kind of mosquitoes they have in, uh, in Africa, but <laughs> they're, they're not getting through there. Oh, well, that's uh, great. <laughs> and even like the rainfly material, it's almost like a PVC, like a rubberized material rather than just like a ripstop. Uh, that easy on stuff is, is, is very nice. I would assume uh, that probably makes it a little heavier than some of the other tents. Yes, not much. I would say, you know, maybe 20 to 30, 20, 30 pounds more. The difference between the two, you know, maybe is like 105 pounds to 130 pounds for easy on tent. Right. So it is a little bit more heavy duty. Instead of like a plastic bottom too, you, uh, with a uh, Smitty built in a lot of the, you know, brands that are coming out of China here, uh, they have like a this, this wafer board uh, aluminum uh, uh, on the bottom there. And then uh, on the easy on stuff, it's a, it's a marine grade uh, plywood. So oh, it's, very nice. they, just, they, they just go the extra mile to, you know, make things really nice. And, uh, you know, again, that's more like your expedition grade stuff. It's about, you know, probably $1,500 more than a Schmitty built too. 
Well, with that marine, marine grade flooring, I mean, if you're a bedwetter, you're going to have to have that. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> so, I, you know, I got to ask, uh, I don't see any bead locks on here and the name of the website's beadlockers.com. How in the yep. world did you guys come up with the name bead lockers for the business? Another funny question. That was one of those nights, you know, when you're uh, up at two in the morning, you're Uh-oh. just trying to put stuff together, uh, and then you're 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 on GoDaddy.com at the same time. Ah, yeah, that makes sense. <laughs> this is, I think this is the same story about Amazon.com. So go ahead. <laughs> yeah, probably. Uh, no, it's just you know I was putting some names together, and I was just like you know beadlocks, uh, you know beadlockers, and uh, beadlockers was available, and uh, I tossed it around. I was just like you know that's kind of got a good ring to it, and. Uh, it's it's a little damaging in SEO and like Google searches because every time you type in bead lockers, bead locks comes up. Oh yeah, I, uh, that's right. But yeah, eventually the crawlers will will, will pick up and uh, people will come to know bead lockers, you know, over the bead lock bead lock uh, wheel. But right. Um, but we do offer again. Uh, right now, uh, I'm the only one loading the, all the inventory right now. So our goal is to load you know over a hundred thousand SKUs over the next several months. So this website is a little bit. This one's new. This one took us about eight months to develop. Uh, there's some cool stuff going on in the background, uh, but you know everything's automated, and uh, we can accommodate you know all the big box uh, performance parts. And on the flip side, we've automated uh, found a way to automate like all of the smaller like my medic uh, peak refuel, uh, and a lot of these other companies I was talking about like the armadillo big uh, tempo tusk scottles. Uh, so you know when somebody places an order on beadlockers.com, now it's just like uh, you know, you can buy a, a my medic uh, medical kit and some a set of Dana sixty axles if you want. So everything's kind of under one roof. It's pretty cool. Yeah, it is really cool. Uh, how long have you guys been doing this? Uh, we opened. Boy, we uh, changed the business model. Let's see, last January. So last year, it's been about a year uh, to the date. Right now, uh, we signed the lease in this place in Howard's Grove, uh, where our retail location is, uh, and opened the doors in March last uh, march of 2021 wow and, uh, with all the products here i figured you were going to tell me tell me you've been doing this for like 10 or 20 years because you guys have a lot of product here i had to do a search for it but i found the bead locks <laughs> sure. so the, the uh, i think it looks like a method wheels uh, is what you have uh, for bead locks yeah i well those might be a, a mock bead lock but uh yeah we we also do race line uh we'll oh, very eventually nice. have all this stuff on there so um we're gonna. I'm a, there'll be a, a number that you can call, and uh, we'll have a little uh, bold section there with over five hundred thousand SKUs available. Please call if you don't see it online or something, something to that effect. Uh, so we'll have a little bit different picture on the front page there, uh, just to kind of let people know that you know, hey, if you don't see it on the website, give us a call because we got it. Well, the the website doesn't look like you guys just put it up. I mean, I'm serious. I thought you guys had been around a lot longer than that, especially with all the all the stuff that you have there. So really good job in such a short period of time. Yeah, thanks a lot. That was uh, the website was uh, you know the, the big one for us. That had to be done right, and uh, that took a long time to develop. And we have a good team uh, working with, uh, behind us here on, on some of this stuff. So that was that was the goal. So tell me, how's it going as far as uh, the the shipping concerns that everybody has? Are you are you doing okay with the shipping? Are you able to get your product that you're you're selling to people yep. okay? Sh- shipping's been okay. Uh, you know, Christmas we had a, a few hiccups here and there. And uh, some of these winter storms, you know, obviously, oh, yeah. but the prices of shipping that uh, that's a little disappointing. Uh, <laughs> you know, everything went up, you know, at least five percent over the last quarter here. Mm-hmm. Uh, but you know, other than that, we've we've been able to get stuff out pretty quick. You know, within three to five days, well, which is pretty good. Because I, uh, I I know everybody's concerned these days. So like, you know, as soon as they uh, decide to buy it, it's like, is it here yet? Is it here yet? Is it here yet? <laughs> it doesn't matter. It doesn't matter. Way. Yeah, <laughs> everybody is. <laughs> it doesn't matter how well you know that there's problems with shipping and there's problems getting stuff. You want it now, damn it! You finally let go of the money. But where is it? So I know yeah. people will be curious about uh, would be curious about how the how you're handling the shipping and it, it's sounds like it's uh, it's very reasonable uh so uh, i wanted to ask you uh i think there was a little something that you had for our listeners uh here a little uh, discount yeah absolutely we have a, a jeep talk 10 is a discount code for uh, all your first-time buyers out there uh go to beadlockers.com you know type in uh, jeep uh, jeep talk 10 
at the checkout and you'll get 10% off. Excellent. That is wonderful. Thank you very much for that. And thank you for our listeners. So uh, guys, that's Jeep Talk 10 and you'll need to go to Bead Lockers, not Beadlock, Bead Lockers dot com which you should already be there because we've said it enough times you should already be perusing <laughs> all the products that are over there and uh, and according to clay there's going to be more to come very very soon it's it's not a matter of getting them it's just a matter of getting them up on the website yep exactly all right clay you know how the kids these days love the social media maybe you do too are you guys on the the tick tock the tick yeah the, well i actually i call it the tic tac which just irritates my wife uh, and uh, the Facebook and uh, you know the Instagram stuff. Are you guys uh, you guys on that social media crap? Yes. So we're on uh, Instagram, Beadlockers USA. Uh, Facebook is Beadlockers, and we also have a, a Beadlockers group put together. Uh, obviously, Beadlockers dot com. And uh, let's see what else. I wanted to add a couple other things. Uh, we don't do. Uh, I'm not really on Twitter, uh, but there is a Twitter uh, you know account set up. Uh, and there's also, let's see, we don't do TikTok or Snapchat or anything like that. Basically, Facebook and Instagram are the two big ones. Um, I did want to add in there, though, uh, as far as uh, our itinerary for 2022, we're going to be at the Moore Expo in uh, Springfield, Missouri mm-hmm. in April. We'll be at Booth 18. You want to come and check us out. And then also, we should be down at the Big Iron Overland Rally. That's going to be in West Mineral, Kansas. Uh, that's put together by the same group uh, as the Moore Expo there. A uh, great group of people down there. Give them a shout out. And uh, we're excited to be at that one. Uh, we're going to try and make a presence at some of the Overland Expos uh, this year as well. And the Adventure Expo out in Washington. And then I'm trying to think of what else. We, uh, we had Jeep Camp last year. Uh, there's an, another event in the fall that we'll be at. It's called CORE. That's the Keweenaw Overland Adventure Retreat. Uh, if you're in Wisconsin, that's a that's a excellent uh, time up there. Even if uh, the tickets are sold out, uh, still buy it. Uh, there's a lady by the name of Cindy Pope. Uh, she runs Northology Adventures. It's an online magazine in Wisconsin. Here, she does an excellent job with it, and uh, just want to give her a shout out as well. Uh, she also runs Wisconsin Overland. So if you're looking for something to do in Wisconsin, here uh, we got plenty of stuff. There's also a bunch of uh, cool groups. Uh, there's the Wisconsin Jeep Owners Group. Uh, it's a local group here. There's Glacial Lake 4x4, and uh, there's the Wisconsin Backwoods 4x4 Club. This is uh, mostly all Jeep stuff, so uh, except for the old, old Overland stuff, Northology Adventures, Wisconsin Overland uh, with Cindy Pope there. She does, she's part, not partial to anything, so uh, <laughs> they do all kinds of cool trips, and then uh, she'll, she's also involved with that core event up in uh, Upper Peninsula there. Very cool. Thank you for all that. Uh, we just missed all of that. I'm glad you threw it in there at the end. Well, Clay, yeah. thank you very much for taking the time to be with us tonight. And uh, please come back anytime. Uh, we would uh, love to have you. Sounds good. Thanks a lot, Tony. Well, thanks again, Clayton Schmelling. Yeah, thanks a lot, Clayton. <laughs> now we've got another awesome place to go spend our Jeep money at. Ah. No, in all seriousness, Clayton has a great thing going on at beadlockers.com. And be sure to use that promo code for 10% off your order. Just enter Jeep Talk 10 at checkout. That's Jeep Talk 10 at checkout to get 10% off your order. Go check them out, beadlockers.com. Be sure to give them a shout out on Facebook, too. Hey, and don't forget, you listening to the show right now. Yes, you could be the best guest we've ever had. Don't believe me? Some of our greatest interviews have been with Jeepers just like you. Everyday Jeeper owners who are willing to tell the story of their Jeep, how you got it, what you've done with it, and to it, for that matter, where it's headed. Everyone has a Jeep story. Let's hear yours. Email the show today or just go to jeeptalkshow.com slash contact to find out how to get a hold of us. Hey, coming up next week, Chelsea Gregory uh, with Trail Hauler JLU. It was a great interview. And What's that? Haunter. Not like hauling, but haunting. You know, I've been reading it wrong. I've been following them on their uh, on the Instagram, and every time I read it, I think of uh, holler. I read oh. holler. <laughs> haunter. No, because like you know, like a jack o' lantern, pumpkin, and and haunting and scary and. Yeah, I mean, we actually talk about that uh, in the interview. I forgot all about that, so I've been reading it wrong. Trail Haunter, JLU. If I'm reading it wrong, I bet you somebody else is too. Uh, I've been watching uh, watching her do a lot of work on their bus. So they've got a, a bus that they've uh, 
uh, that, that actually they can uh, have the, uh, the Jeep on the back so they have a place to stay and a place to uh, haul their Jeep around. So it's really, I really cool. I love those setups. I, I've seen a couple of those done. Big, huge, you know, Bluebird buses from the 70s, and, and they, they cut them all to shreds and turn them into a toy hauler and an awesome RV. So that's that, that's some pretty cool building right there. Yeah. So uh, like I said, well, I've been watching, uh, watching her on Instagram, uh, sitting there uh, cleaning up the bus and making some repairs and, uh, I, I personally, I don't see that they're ever, ever going to come back home once they get the, the Jeep loaded and go tra- traveling around with that uh, orange right. bus. So, very cool. Are you living the Jeep life? From mall crawlers to weekend warriors, from daily drivers to weekend wheelers, it's all about the Jeep life, and it's all good. It's time for Jeep Life with Jeep Mama. Hey guys, more Jeep slang you need to know. This time it's not Jeep Mama's top 10, but top 10 and must-know Jeep slang from our listeners. Thanks all who reached out and shared with me more Jeep slang every Jeeper must know. You guys rock. And so here's what is sh- was shared. So the first one is UGG. It's, this one's my favorite sound. Um, the moment when you look up ahead to find the best line to go through, but there isn't one. So then you get out of your Jeep and you look again. And you were right the first time. There isn't a good line, and you're like, ugh. <laughs> so, Jeep hole. What my husband and I call a Jeeper who doesn't wave back. Oh. Okay, so, yeah. This, this I like is that from one. another Jeeper. I like uh, that. <laughs> shovel, a stock TJ transfer case skid. Yes. And I didn't get this one until someone showed me a picture, and I'm like, I get it now. When they get really deep in the mud, apparently, it just kind of all goes into the mm-hmm. skid plate. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Getting ducked. This is a new one. Well, maybe a new one. Hashtag duck duck jeep. It's when someone likes your jeep and then gives you a small rubber ducky to let you know it's awesome. I guess we could have getting rat bastard as a jeep slang, too. Getting ratted. Getting ratted. Yeah. Ratted. Mall crawlers. Jeeps that never leave the pavement, and they usually have fancy bling on them. Send it. When you're trying to climb up a hill or some rocks and you just can't make it, and your spotter yells at you to send it, which means floor it or hit that skinny pedal or give it more gas. And then break have. some stuff. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Have you, Wendy, have you yelled send it a couple of times never, when you're out never. spotting? <laughs> no. No, nope. nope. Wendy nope. doesn't yell. Send it. I kind of want her as my <laughs> spotter. Then <laughs> what? What when they they're not uh, not paying attention to you, Wendy? Do you just say send it? Just get frustrating. Go ahead. Just do what the hell do you want to do. There, no, there's some f- finger <laughs> languages going on at that moment. <laughs> Pay attention. <laughs> sliders, rock sliders, or rocker guards. They help your jeep slide over the rocks, and they're typically constructed of heavy gauge steel tubing. And they ride right below your rocker panels. And you can use, use them as a step, too, to get into your Jeep. Skids. Skid plates. Some people call it armor. It's protective plates, usually steel or aluminum, to protect your undercarriage of your Jeep from damage when you're wheeling off-road. Tail gunner. This is the last vehicle in the group of vehicles on a trail ride. This person is in charge of making sure... No one in the group gets lost. They keep the group together. And I think Wendy's talked about this before um, in one of the episodes. I don't remember which one about trail guides and trail gunners and their roles. Yep. Death wobble. This is the dreaded one nobody wants to have to say. It's an uncontrollable, violent shaking of your entire Jeep. Not just the steering wheel and not just the normal vibration and shimmy. It feels like death is happening to your Jeep. So a bonus here from um, some of our Aussie friends who reached out to me to share some of the Jeep slang in Australia. You have park bench. That's a stock front bumper. I like that one. (laughs) That's Uh perfect. And um, this one, Tony, I don't know if I can say this word. Should I just say beep or will you beep me? Oh, Um, F hand. Yeah, just say OF. Yeah. We say O shit handles, but they say O F handles like the actual F word, um, when they talk about the grab handles. Uh, Water catchment 
is the floor pan. And they call them fast pedals instead of gas pedals. <laughs> Did we miss any Jeep slang? Give us a shout. Call it in. Send us an email. Let us know what we missed on the top Jeep slang you must know to be a good Jeeper. I call it skinny pedal. I, I've always called it yeah. Yeah, skinny. Yeah. Give it yeah, some I've, skinny pedal. Yeah, I've heard that too. Skinny pedal. I don't know if you guys remember or not, whenever I went to be interviewed by uh, the local uh, trail lady, not trail lady, the local uh, uh, traffic lady on uh, the Fox uh, station, and uh, we uh, I took a quick ride uh, around the block in the XJ, and oh, I said, right. I said, you can pull yourself up on the on that handle getting in, and she goes, oh, that's the oh shit handle, and I went, oh, holy crap, this, <laughs> she knows a little, a little something about off-road here. Right. The, I, I love all of these. It was nice that your listeners, too, or your followers, I guess, actually well, wrote into you and said, here's some additional ones. And some of them were um, Jeep Talk Show listeners. They, yeah. they intersperse. So that's kind of awesome. Well, how does Tammy's Jeep life compare with yours? We're always looking for Jeep stories, so contact us and let us know what your Jeep life is like. Just go to jeeptalkshow.com slash contact to find out how. You know, and something else you're going to find there at jeeptalkshow.com slash contact is going to be how to sign up for our newsletter. There's some very easy uh, directions there. You can find a link to click and sign up for it. And don't worry, we're not going to spam you. We don't sell your information. None of that kind of stuff. The Jeep Talk Show newsletter comes out once a week. And sometimes not even that. No, seriously, it's one email a week that you're going to get. It's going to be chock full of all kinds of information of how to join in on the show as we do a recording. That's right. You yourself could actually be a part of a Jeep Talk Show recording. Don't necessarily have to be an interview, uh, you know, interviewee as, as you were. Just uh, pop up around the campfire and, and join us around a, a Tuesday recording of the Jeep Talk Show on our roundtable discussions. And it's very easy to sign up for our newsletter. Just head over to that link one more time, jeeptalkshow.com slash contact. And uh, don't worry, it's just as easy to unsubscribe as it is to subscribe. Well, that's it for the show for this week, my fellow Jeeper. Until next week, be sure to give some thought to being a guest on the Jeep Talk Show. We would love to hear your Jeep story. And as always, thank you for listening to the world's most downloaded Jeep podcast. You know, when they say it means just empty every pocket... They're not kidding. <laughs> Welcome back, Danny. Thank you. Oh, I'm guessing since 2010.